What's up everybody, Jason Boone here from premiumbeat.com. Today I want to go over five quick tips to help you organize and customize Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get started. So I have a blank project open here. So let's go through these tips one by one. The first one is we're going to create custom bins in our project panel. Now this is going to help us stay organized. And if you've watched any of my other tutorials, you know that I have uh, a, lot of, a lot of bins that I like to use and I like to keep things nice and neat. And this is good if you're working with other editors or if you're working by yourself. It just helps you stay, you know, nice and organized. And you can, if you're opening an old project, you can tell what's going on. Or if another editor jumps on and, and needs to cut something together, they can at least see what's going on to, uh, to, a, to a little bit of an extent. Okay, so to create a new bin, you can do shortcut key uh, command B or just select the new bin button down here. And I'm going to create a video bin an audio bin, a graphics bin, and sequences. These are generally my four go-tos. And these are, this is really a personal and project specific. So let's say you're working on a documentary. That might be different than if you're working on some kind of multi-cam uh, live event shoot. So whatever folders you think work best for you, by all means, customize this to your own you know, liking. Now I'm going to create a couple of subfolders. I usually go with sound effects and music. And for sequences, you can do masters and rough cuts. Graphics, I usually do images and titles, maybe animations or motion graphics, whichever. And then for video, you may want to just leave it. But if you want to do B-roll and interviews, that could be good. OK, so now there's a quick grouping of custom bins here that will definitely help us stay organized. If, our, you know, if we are working with a semi-large project, this is going to help everything stay in its place and stay nice and neat. OK, so our second tip, we're going to customize our source and program panels here. And if you look down here, there's all these buttons, and there's just a lot of buttons. And the more I use Premiere, obviously, the the more shortcut keys I learn. And a lot, I, I now that I think of it, I probably never actually just clicked a lot of these buttons because sim like simply the play button or step forward one frame. These are really simple keyboard shortcuts, such as space bar and right arrow, left arrow. So. I think it's good to kind of customize this to kind of declutter it and you can add whichever you know buttons you need you actually need and use so I'm just gonna get rid of a lot of these um, I'll leave marker but so many of these I just hardly ever use loop is a good one I'm gonna leave that up there play video and doubt that's a good one I'm gonna remove the play button Uh, can I just drag it out anywhere? Yeah, okay. I don't need insert. I don't need overwrite. Okay, these look pretty good. Maybe I'll do safe margins if we're working in like a broadcast environment. It's good to have that. And I think we're good here. Let's go okay. See, much better. It's much better, much cleaner. Kind of decluttered it. And I could do the same thing over here, but I'm not going to uh, waste the time going through. I, I would do the same exact thing over on the on the program monitor here so yeah much much better and in fact I could probably learn the keyboard shortcuts of a few of these like marker we really don't need because I, I would never use I'd probably remove that one as well okay so for our, the third tip we can go down to our timeline but we're gonna need to create a sequence so let's go ahead and create a quick sequence go to the new item button sequence and then digital SLR is fine 24p sequence let's see sequence 01 Okay, so we have a sequence now, and there's just a lot of tracks. There's a lot going on here that, that I may not prefer to have. I may not need all these tracks when I'm editing. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the empty tracks, and it's going to delete all of the empty tracks except for one on each. And now I don't like, you know, this is, again, this is all personal preference. Let's say I don't like how small these are, so I want to, you know, expand them. 
and I like that. And, and let's also say, theoretically, I'm just working in one video and one audio track for all of my stuff. So I don't even need a lot of other tracks. And this is how I always like like the the track height. So I don't want to, every time I open, an, or every time I have a new project or come into a project, I don't want to have to delete tracks and then move the height. So I can go over here to timeline display settings and there's a track height section and I can actually save out the preset here and call it uh, uh, Boone's track. <laughs> That's fine. We could even uh, assign a keyboard shortcut to it, but I am not going to do that. Okay. So we have our track height preset. Now for the fourth tip, I'm going to take it a step further and customize our workspace. So let's say some of these panels, we want to move them around. Let's say we want to use our effects panel and we're going to be pulling from effects a lot. So we don't want that hidden behind our project panel. So let's move it over here right next to the timeline and kind of resize it. And then let's say we're not going to be, hmm, let's see here. Let's say we're not going to be using the audio track mixer that much. So we could go ahead and close this panel. We have our source and effects controls. So let's also say we want our effect controls right behind our effects. So when we're working, we can quickly jog between the two. And then we'll resize this. And now we can save this out as a custom workspace. So we go to Window, Workspaces, Save as a New Workspace. And since I'm very narcissistic, I'll just call it Boone's Workspace. And there we go. OK, so we have our buttons customized here. We have our bins. We have our track height preset. And we have our custom workspace. Now, what I want to tell you for the fifth tip is kind of bringing this all together. We can create a template project. So what we would do with a template project, we would just save this out, say on our desktop or somewhere on our hard drive, and we could call it template, or we could call the project workflow. And then when we open this project up, you can simply save it as a copy and use that, and it's gonna have all your custom bins, all your presets, everything's gonna be ready to go. And in addition to that, you could add, which is what, what would happen at my last uh, place of employment at the TV station that I worked at, since we were working in a broadcast realm, we had uh, certain bars and tone clips. Um, we had uh, uh, title information that we had to use every time we were sending out a finished or we were ready to export a sequence for air. We would have to use certain assets. So we would just include all those assets in the template project so that when you opened up the template project, or you would copy it and then open it up, it would have all of your branding information as well as all the assets you needed. Since again, we had seven to eight editors, you know, it was pretty important that we were all working on the same standard and all this with all the same assets. So, those are the five tips to help you customize and organize Adobe Premiere Pro. If you have any extra tips, feel free to leave them in the comments section. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality, royalty-free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects.